God is good. Amen all the time. Thank you, Master. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Now, hallelujah. You know, Jesus came into the world, and the forerunner of Jesus was John the Baptist, who came in the spirit of Elijah. And John came to baptize in water and for the remission of sin. It was symbolic. That's what water, the baptism of water is. But Jesus came to baptize with fire. And the baptism of fire, what fuels the fire is oil. Does everybody get it? That's why Jesus warned us. He said, you know, there was the wise virgins and the foolish ones. Those that were staying filled with the oil and those who were not. And so many people are being misled in that area to where they know the word. They know God's promises, but they're not able to stand on them. Because without the presence of God and the anointing of God, you can't. Amen? You just can't. You don't have the power to stand on them. And then you walk in fear. You walk in worry. You can't trust God. You begin to fall in that place where you trust you. And we're our worst enemy. Amen? <laughs> so, you know, you can ask yourself, who told me this? You can say flesh. <laughs> you can say whatever, you know. But many times we're our worst enemy. And there's something God is trying to do tremendously. We've talked about this already, and the Holy Spirit brought it to me again. He's trying to bring us to that place where the light of his glory is seen through us. The light of his glory is seen through us. So without the fire, amen, without the fueling of the fire, there can be no light. And without the light, his glory can't be seen. Is everybody okay? We'll get more into this. The light in us is to express his glory. What's his glory? It's his manifested presence. It's his image and likeness and character. So that you and I walk like he walks. You know, God is the God of time and perfect time. <laughs> Amen. He knows exactly when, how, and where. And the enemy loves to push us out of position and not wait on God. Everybody's waiting on something from God. There isn't a person in the world that's not waiting on something from God. And when he fulfills something, we're still waiting on something else. Why? Because he always keeps us in a place of want, but it's wanting more of him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I won't lack, in other words. We won't lack. We won't lack. Why? Listen, you'll never lack if you stay fueled with the oil. Amen? Why? Because then the light of his glory will shine through you. In Matthew 17, starting at verse 1. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Amen. Now, one day with the Lord is equal to what? A thousand years. So now this is saying after 6,000 years, and here we go again, prophetic time. Amen? Prophetic time. He's telling us something very powerful. Now we are, 6,000 6, years has already been completed. We're going through it. Amen? The next thing we're going to be reaching is we're going to be headed to the 7,000th year, right? And, and it says that he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now again, Jesus is the light of glory. And he had the two witnesses with him that showed up. He was transfigured into the glory. His, 
glory was expressed, his presence manifest of who he truly is. Amen. Believe me, when they saw Jesus, he didn't, he didn't look human. <laughs> he looked fiery eyes. Wool hair. Does somebody understand it? He looked just like what it talks about in a book of Revelations. And then Moses and Elijah showed up. The two witnesses, but they are also known as the oil witnesses. They were the lampstands. They showed up. Now again, this is prophetic insight of what God's about to do. Now we know this is about the rapture and so forth, but first of all, before the rapture comes, God's going to change his people into his more of his image and likeness through the glory. So Jesus is the light of the glory with the two witnesses, and they are the lights of his glory on each side. Moses was associated with the Old Testament and the law, and Elijah is associated with the New Testament because it's the spirit, the ministry of the spirit. Now Moses, he was changing water into blood, wasn't he? And Elijah was calling fire down from heaven. Why? Because of the anointing they had. So we know that these two witnesses in the Old Testament called fire down from heaven, amen, and changed water into blood. But what's to come is they will return. In Revelation 11, in verse 1, I was given a read like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles. And they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months, which is three and a half years. And I'll give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth, which is three and a half years. These are the two olive trees. Olive is what is fueling the fire. It's oil. And the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. So he's talking about Moses and Elijah that are standing before as their two witnesses. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. In other words, the anointing and the glory of God will be so strong that what they speak will be like fire coming out of their mouths. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters that turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. These are the two witnesses that are anointed ones of oil and light that express Christ's glory. They're expressing his glory. See, the world's about to see the glory of God. They won't know how to handle it. This is promised by God Almighty that His glory would be released. I want you to know that when the Lord was giving me this message and I just happened to turn on some, I went on my computer and all of a sudden there was this guy giving a testimony about how the Lord took him and how God showed him how His glory was going to be released and the world was going to change. I thought, whoa, Lord. This is amazing to me again. He always confirms something. He said the world's going to change. The world is going to see God's glory because God's going to reveal himself because it's his manifested presence. It's his character. It's who he is. But I've always shared before that the Lord's going to come through the body of Christ first before he personally returns because he desires no one to be lost and he wants to rescue as many people as possible. He's going to express his character, his glory, through what we call the anointing and the power of the anointing. What is the anointing of God? 
the anointing of God, and you got to write this down. you got to get an understanding of this. What is the anointing? It's his presence, his power, and his truth of God Almighty. His presence, his power, and his truth. His presence, his power, and his truth. That's who Christ is. He was the anointing put in a body. That's why he's called the Christ. He's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty coming to this realm to be released to his people. The manifested presence of God is coming to change the earth. His glory is going to change the earth, and we will see it. There will be a time that you won't care anymore about anything else. You won't, in fact, if you're walking in the spirit, you don't care about anything else anyways. <laughs> Amen. The only thing you want is God's purpose to be fulfilled, not your own. But see, not everyone is there that's depending on that level of the individual. But God is bringing us to the level of the glory of God. And the world will see the glory of God on us. And a world will want what you have. Because the glory of God always draws the presence, uh, always draws other people. It, it shoes away demons and draws people's hearts. And let me tell you, things happen in the glory of God that your carnal mind can't comprehend. And this guy was talking about the glory of God when the Lord visited him. He said he shook like crazy. He said it started with one thing and his whole body was just shaking like crazy. And I, could, I, I know what he was talking about because I know when the glory of God fell on me, I looked like a fish out of water or looked like I was having a cerebral palsy attack. I don't know, like a, 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 some kind of a seizure. You know, all twisted up and all, and I was all over the place. But I was flipping and flapping, finally flew off of my couch. The first thing I said to the Lord, I, that came out of my mouth, I said, that's your glory. And I saw his glory. And the next thing I know, it was like somebody squeezed me, squeezed every bit of breath out of me. I couldn't breathe. And then, then boom, I was flipping and flapping. My wife moved the coffee table because I was on the couch. I flew off the coffee table. I had no control. None. But you would look at me going, oh my God, his bones must be breaking. Everything in me was twisting and a turning and a shaking and a quaking. And I began to roll. Talk about a holy roller. And I was rolling back and forth, and I had no control over this. And I was praying in multiple languages. I, had, didn't, I didn't have any control. And I heard these out of my ears. I was speaking in every kind of language possible. Then finally when I stopped, the face of God came in the living room to me. And he said, be not dismayed, I've come to dwell with you. Now lay your hands on everyone in this room and, get, and impart in them the thirst and the hunger for the lost. Well, let me tell you, I was never the same. Been estranged ever since. Wanting more. You know? Hey, you can twist me, throw me in a knot. I don't care. I love it. Let your glory come. <laughs> because we were just at a revival and I brought a video home. And that video was anointed with the glory of God. And when I saw the glory of God hit that pastor, I said, Lord, that's your glory. Next thing, woof, I was gone. Gone. That's the second time that's happened to me. I've never had it. I mean, I've had it multiple times, but never as strong as that. But I'm telling you, when the glory of God comes on us, the world's going to see 
Because it won't be you no more. It's not you. After my visitation from the Lord, I walked around like I was Jesus. I mean, I thought like him. I spoke like him. I couldn't function in this world for two months. Now, what I just told you what happened didn't happen until almost a year later. But after my visitation from the Lord, when my wife first saw me four days after my visitation, I talked just like Jesus. Everything was about Jesus. I mean, I was talking, I, I never saw so many things in my life. I was talking to the bugs and everything, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean life was awesome. I saw things I didn't know. I had dreams and vision. I'll take them multiple times. And I saw the Lord's return. My wife would, she, she'd get up, and there I am looking out the window. And it wasn't because of paranoia. I was looking out the window because I was going, did you hear that? I mean, I woke up because I saw the Lord's return. I'm thinking, I went to the window to make sure. What's going on? I mean, this was going on, taking multiple times. I don't know why he did that. I guess he needed to run me over with one of those Holy Ghost tanks. And then multiple things had happened. I mean, even a horse came up and talked to me. I mean, how do you explain that stuff to people? They, you, oh, really? You're Mr. Ed now or what? Yeah. <laughs> Putting out fires by the word of by the words coming out of my mouth. All kinds of things. Just the power of God, the glory of God, the light of his glory was shining so bright and so beautiful. It lasted a couple of years. Then it began, then, you know, like Moses, he wore a bag for a little while, you know. And the glory drifted. But then you got to walk by faith. I'd rather walk by glory, to be honest with you. But then I had to walk by faith and stay filled with the Spirit. I had to fight more. He made it so simple and easy, you know. When the glory of God is there, you just think something, boom, and it happens. Whoa. I mean, I thought snow, and it snowed. In Arizona. It was 90 degrees or 85 degrees that day. That night I said to my wife, I don't know why, but I want to see snow. I woke up, and there were snow and snowflakes as big as my fist. Everything, I was, things that I was thinking, just like what he said, I, I'll, I'll do far above all you could ever ask or think. It was happening. Why? Because the glory of God was there. The glory of God was there. The light of his glory was shining through. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18. Little children, does the last hour, and if you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for they had been of us. They would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. What was going to be making the manifest was God's glory. <laughs> they were going to manifest. Why? Because demons manifest in God's glory. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. That's all I needed to know. And we know all things. Why? Because the anointing connects you to the other side. Where everything is known. God oversees everything. You are now connected to the mind of Christ and the anointing. Does everybody get this? Why? Because it's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. You are connected to his glory, the person of who he is in the anointing. And you know all things. If we'll just hear, if we'll just wait, if we'll just be patient, if we'll just take the time to hear. And not fall in the entanglements of the world of fear, worry, anxiousness. What am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? Where am I going to work? 
How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? That's a bunch of eyes that need to be buried. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 24, please. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up, fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. See, his saints are to be glory carriers. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, the hope that the glory be manifested through us. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Christ in us, the hope of glory. <laughs> the next level of reality and identity. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in his last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, <clears throat> through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, in other words, the brightness of his glory, the light of his glory, an express image of his person, in other words, expressing who he is, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the ma majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. In other words, he is the light of God's glory. He is in the image, the character of God Almighty. Jesus was the light carrier but he was the and he maintained that light in him through the oil and express God's glory but you can't express God's glory without the light amen see so so many people's light have become dim and they can't overcome that's the ploy of the enemy is to drain us so our flames don't stay a certain level. Does everybody understand that? He wants to bring, first thing he wants to do is bring doubt, fear, and unbelief. He wants to bring worry and frustration and anxiousness. He wants to take your eyes off of Jesus and put them on you. 2 Corinthians 4. In verse 3, please. Even if our gospel is veiled, in other words, a message of truth, if it's veiled or blinded, it is veiled to those who are perishing. It's blinded to them. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the light of the message of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Here we are, the light of his glory. It is the message of the light of his glory. Does everybody get it? It is the message of the light. So who's preventing this to happen? The enemy. The message of the light of his glory, as his offsprings, are hindered by evil forces of deception. We are his offsprings. We are the carriers of his glory. And the enemy will do everything he can to drain you, to prevent you, to, mis to distract you. To bring you in a state of woes as measies. You know, one of the things, one of the things, I'll, I'll tell you, I was driving down the road and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Lord said to me, offense is weakness. 
He says, when somebody's offended, it's because they're weak. Whoa. Offended people are weak. What are they weak? They're weak in the spirit. Amen? Because we should not be offended. We overcome offense. Does everybody get it? If you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might, whatever anybody says, who gives a hoot? Why? Because the only one you're accountable to is him. Amen? That's what you got to be accountable to. But if you can't be accountable to him, you can't be accountable to anybody else either. Exodus 27 and verse 20. The Lord told Moses, he said, you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to cause the lamp to burn continually. To burn when? Continually. In the tabernacle meeting outside the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his son shall tend it from evening until morning before the Lord. It shall be a statue forever to their generations on behalf of the children of Israel. We are to keep that light continuing. In other words, we got to have that oil continuously. Amen? The oil for the light to express His glory continuously. You know, one of the things you don't want to do is associate things that will drain you. Amen? And, and you don't even realize it. You know, that's why people get involved in other people's burdens sometimes, and I shouldn't. You pray for things. You don't have to look at your, you don't have to rescue everyone and fix everything. I know people are, are spending more time fix, trying to fix other people, and they can't even fix themselves. That's why bad company corrupts good habits, but you know what? Associations that will drain you. You know, Especially families and with children and so forth, those kids can drain you. If you've got an addicted spouse or child, they can drain you if you don't let them go. You've got to let God be God and you're not God. So all we're supposed to do is pray and intercede and be an example to them. Because if they drain you, you ain't going to be a very good example to them. Ephesians 5 verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Amen? The days are evil. Things are getting worse, but they're getting better for all, me and you. Amen? We are the light of his temple, express image of his glory. You know, I, I, I always think about how freaked out the Jews are going to really be. You know, after I got saved, I wanted to go to every synagogue and tell them the truth. <laughs> Man, I had a visitation from Jesus. I got to tell you this. They wouldn't let me in, though. I wanted to go everywhere and tell all the Jews about what the truth was. I wanted to go everywhere and tell everybody what the truth was. I still do. Acts chapter 17, verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. 29. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. See, the divine nature is the glory of God. Truly, these times of ignorance and stupidity, God has overlooked. 
but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this by raising him from the dead. See, one of the things that's going to happen, remember John the Baptist came to, call, to bring people into repentance with the baptism of repentance. Amen? Remission of sin. When the glory of God comes, its first, I don't want to say project, but its first invasion <laughs> is going to bring such conviction that it's going to turn hearts to repentance. It's going to rip through those seared conscience and re reconnect them again to where they're going to fall to their knees and repent. And it's not because of anything else, but it's going to be the love of God that's going to penetrate hearts and minds and souls. That's what the glory of God did. See, it's His love. That's what His glory is. His manifested presence is love. And when His love infiltrates and penetrates every heart, mind, and will and desire of an individual, they will fall to their knees. The first thing they'll do is repent and forgive. They'll forgive everyone that's offended them, everyone that's hurt them, everyone, everything that's happened in their life. They will fall in a place of such forgiveness and repentance. Why? Because His love has overtaken everything. Then He'll fill them and heal them, baptize them in the fire. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Glory. We are His offspring and the divine nature of His glory. Isaiah 60, the scripture will be engraved in your spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the what? The people. Only God's glory can penetrate that deep darkness. But the Lord will rise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings of the, to the brightness of your rising. This is what's going to happen. Hello? Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? The fast to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover them. And do not hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. Why? He's saying so. So. That's how, you, you know, people don't realize that when you are sowing, you are sowing in faith, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through finances, whether it's through helping, through labor, whatever it is. You are sowing. And that faith is currency in heaven. That's how you purchase things from God. You must sow. I get calls all the time. In fact, I had a call from someone yesterday. They wanted help, this, this, and whatever. Somebody had gone through a lot of stuff, and they, they're basically kind of really bound up. All kinds of things. They want to know if I could help him, but the, the person doesn't even know whether he wants help. I said, first of all, we need to break through some things. You need to sow. In the, so I told him, I gave him the prayers on eternal library to break some curses off. If that person's not willing to speak it, then that person ain't willing to do whatever it takes to be free. Because you got to sow, sow, and sow. You got to speak it. If you're not willing to speak it and break these things off, then ain't nothing going to happen. Because, see, we've tied the hands of God and to loose the hand of God, you've got to sow. Why? Because you're sowing in faith now. 
Now you're purchasing things from heaven. Then God can move. He said, then your light will break, shall sh your light shall sh break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord, the, the Lord shall be your what? Rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and the speaking of wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell. In other words, what will be restored is God's love. Because God's love has been breached so badly. You know how many times I've talked to so many people, and they've always said something about, uh, they were offended at a, 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 at a church or whatever. Let me tell you, if you're filled with God's spirit, you don't get offended. Hello. Bottom line is you're still about yourself. Does everybody get it? You're still about yourself then. The church can't offend anyone unless they let it. You can't be offended unless you let it. didn't mean that you would, it wouldn't come, but what are you going to do with it? You're going to hold a grudge? You're going to be bitter? Then you're just opening the door to the enemy. And he's going to attack you more and make you worse. <laughs> Hello? You forgive, you bless, you move on. Why? Because you want the light of his glory to shine through you. Acts chapter 3 and verse uh, 18. Through the Spirit, peace, joy, and righteousness, and the Holy Ghost, Right? If that ain't happening, there's something wrong with you. Everybody there? But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you beforehand whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. So what's he saying? Repent so you can be what? Refreshed, reconnected, renewed, restored. Revelation 12, verse 7. War broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world and still deceiving and still going to attempt to deceive. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So deception is darkness, isn't it? When somebody falls into a place of deception, they are deceived. They've been lied to. And now they've been blinded. Man, I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been with individuals and so forth, and all of a sudden, they changed. That veil came. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they just fell into deception. They believed something the enemy said. And that veil came. And you can look at that person and you can see it's no longer the same person. Because that spirit comes and blinds. And that person can't see you, doesn't want to hear anything. No matter what you try and tell them. And the only thing they can penetrate that is they need to turn to repentance. So most of the time they have to go eat more dirt or something, get more and more involved in something stupid, you know. Because they can't take counsel. 
Does everybody understand there? In verse 10 it says, Then I, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, the anointing, have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Matthew seven twenty one. Then I'm going to close here. You know, again, we've been talking about being offended. Well, don't be an offense. <laughs> Amen. Don't be the one that causes offense. Because you'll be in as much trouble as the one who's offended. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Very simple. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock, the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the anointing or on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Again, standing on the rock, standing on the word, the rock is associated with the anointing. Amen? So this is eternal presence, power, and truth. Your foundation is built on the anointing. And then... The Word of God is built on the foundation and His promises and covenant. So it's important that we maintain the oil of flight to keep that fire burning, no matter what. You'll begin to realize that you're becoming dry, <laughs> drained, frustrated. Frustration is usually a sign of it. When you're frustrated, you step back. You need to get filled again. Amen? Don't try to work things out when you're frustrated because you're in the flesh. Don't try to justify and make excuses because you're in the flesh. And if you sow in the flesh, you reap corruption, and that's what the enemy wants you. You step back and you get filled with the Spirit of God. Why? Right, because then you, everything's going to turn out fine. <laughs> okay, cool. Don't care. Amen. That's the fruit of the Spirit. You don't care. You're in a place where, oh, hallelujah. Okay, cool. God's gonna, God's got it. He's gonna work it out. Amen. Like I said, don't worry, be happy. But if you're still worrying about things, it's because you're in the flesh. Oh, well, I'm not worried, I'm just concerned. It's the same. <laughs> Hello? I need to fix this. Now you don't. You need to get your paws off of it. Because if your hands are on it, his aren't. Amen? We're on a time right now <clears throat> in this transition that the attacks are stronger because they're trying to prevent you from getting to that place to receive. Remember, this whole place is nothing but a training session. The earth is a training school. It's going to be a, this whole time that you're alive in this realm, in this reality. When you come out of it, it will be like a one night's sleep. For some people, it will be a good dream. For some people, it will be a nightmare. Depending where you end up. <laughs> That's why he says, count it all joy when you fall into trials and tribulations and various trials and whatever. Why? Because you're just being trained for something better. But you got to begin to look that you are being trained for something better. Stop.
being so caught up in this reality. It's temporary. And it's a false reality anyways. Yeah, I know we get hurt. Yeah. But we don't belong here. Even the Lord told us we don't belong here. This is not our home. Amen. So don't make it your home. <laughs> we have a dual citizenship, but our true citizenship is from heaven. We live from the future to the present. Let's keep it that way. That's what holds your identity together, knowing who you are and where you're going and why you're here. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal everything that's been imparted to us and protect us so the enemy doesn't steal it, so that it grows for your glory. I pray blessing over each and every one, Lord, and that understanding will come in every area that's been released tonight and prophetic insight in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.